You know, over the last couple of months, I've been sharing with our TV audience that we are in the process of building our Karis Bible College so that it will not be second rate to any university in the world. And we already have great facilities, but we need student housing. We need a student activity center. We need athletic center. We need hotel and conference center, bridges, roads, just a lot of things. It's gonna cost hundreds of millions of dollars. And I'm going to you, our television audience, and asking you to participate in helping us get this built. You know, I typically in the past have always gone to just partners, people who've already gotten materials, who voluntarily come to us, and I've used them to finance all of our ministry, and we give nearly everything away on television. But this is gonna cost hundreds of millions of dollars to turn Karis into a first-class university-type college campus. And uh, in order to do that, I just need more people. So I'd like to encourage you to go to awmi.net slash campus, and we have a flyover, which is a architect's rendering of what the buildings are gonna look like. You can go inside and see what they're gonna look like. And I encourage you to go check it out. And we are now actually building as fast as we can, but we need to build quicker. We've got people that wanna come and we just can't accommodate them. So please check it out, awmi.net slash campus. And if you are in agreement, if you have been blessed, and if you wanna help us equip other people to take this life-changing message around the world, please join with us, become a foundation builder, and help us get this Karis Bible College campus built so that we can accommodate more people. Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 55 years of ministry. I grew up with the knowledge of God and the presence of God, but I knew I needed to know Him better. I've always thought of God as a harsh father. His teachings just really brought me back to, you know, knowing who God is and recognizing it. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today is my beginning of my fourth week teaching on 20 revelations that will change your life. And we are on revelation number five. And uh, this is just a brief summary. I'm not going into detail. What I'm doing is mentioning these things and then we're offering other products that will go into more detail. So on this one, I'm talking about unconditional love. And I've got not only this little booklet that we're giving away free, but then we've got CDs and DVDs and a USB that was taken from these exact television programs that will talk about God's unconditional love. I've got a teaching on the book of Romans. This is a 430 page book that goes verse by verse through the book of Romans. And I tell you, this is powerful, talking about the unconditional love of God. We've got CDs and DVDs on that. And then we also have a uh, video teaching. This is one of my older teachings entitled God's Kind of Love to You. And it's talking about the unconditional love of God. And I'd encourage you to please take advantage of all of these products. Yesterday, I was teaching out of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 about God's kind of love and it being unconditional. In the King James, it uses the word charity, but that really is a good word because love has uh, been polluted, corrupted. People say that love is between two women or between two men when they have sex. That's not love. That's lust. That's demonic. Charity is really describing God's kind of love. And we have already covered 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 5. In verse 6, it says, God's kind of love rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Did you know that there are some people that when people fail, they just re they rejoice at that because they, they wanted they, to say, I told you so, and they rejoice in seeing other people suffer. You can see this in marriages sometimes, that when there's contention between the husband and wife, that uh, one will rejoice to see the other somehow or another suffer. God isn't like that. This is talking about God's kind of love, and God does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. It saddens the Lord when He sees us suffer, when He sees us sick, when He sees us poor. And again, see, religion is taught just the opposite of this. Religion will actually tell you sometimes that God is the one who put poverty on you to break you and to humble you and to make you 
uh, a better person. That God's the one who put sickness into your life. God's the one that caused your business to fail. I'm saying flat out that those are lies. That is not accurately representing God. God does not rejoice when you fail. God is not the one who's causing your problems. God is not the one who's caused people to die that you've prayed for. He's not the one that's taken them from you. He's not the one that caused the divorce. He's not the one that caused your children to go off the rails. God does not do that. God is not rejoicing in iniquity, but He rejoices in the truth. He rejoices when you prosper. Psalms chapter 35, verse 27 says, Let all those who favor my righteous cause say continually, Let God be magnified, which has pleasure in the prosperity of His servant. God is pleased when you prosper. He is not pleased when you are failing. You know, this ought to be... It ought to be normal for every minister to say those kind of things, but what I'm saying right here comes as a total shock to millions and millions of people that go to church because church basically blames God for everything. We'll even write it in our contracts and say, you're insured except barring acts of God, such as uh, disasters, earthquakes, floods, and think tornadoes and stuff like that. Those are not acts of God. God is not the one who caused this world to go out of whack. We're the ones who gave this world over to the devil and have loosed him and has caused all this kind of stuff. There are some people watching this program that what I'm saying is just totally shocking you. You've never heard somebody say this. I'm talking about God's kind of love. He rejoices when you are in the truth. He rejoices to see you prosper. He delights in the prosperity of His servant. Man, that's awesome. And he goes on to say in verse 7, He beareth all things believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. This is talking about God's kind of love. There are some of you that think, man, I just don't believe God can put up with me anymore. I failed Him so badly. You know, before I got a full revelation on this, I've, if you've been watching the programs, I told, I've given my personal experience that I got to trusting in myself and, AND GOD SHOWED UP AND I SAW HIS GLORY. AND WHEN I DID, I TURNED FROM MY OWN SELF-RIGHTEOUSNESS AND REPENTED, AND A SUPERNATURAL LOVE OF GOD CAME OVER ME. AND SO I EXPERIENCED LOVE, BUT I DIDN'T UNDERSTAND IT. AND ALL OF MY TEACHING WAS JUST LIKE WHAT I'M COUNTERING RIGHT HERE, THAT GOD LOVES US WHEN WE'RE WORTH LOVING, WHEN WE'RE LOVELY. AND SO EVEN THOUGH I HAD EXPERIENCED UNCONDITIONAL LOVE, AND I KNEW IT EXISTED, I STILL COULDN'T EMBRACE IT COMPLETELY. MAN, I COULD SAY SO MUCH RIGHT HERE, BUT YOU CANNOT WALK IN SOMETHING THAT YOU CAN'T UNDERSTAND. YOU MIGHT EVENTUALLY, YOU KNOW, STUMBLE ONTO SOMETHING. AN OLD BLIND SQUIRREL WILL GET A NUT EVERY ONCE IN A WHILE IF HE DOESN'T QUIT. AND SO YOU MIGHT HAVE SOME KIND OF, YOU KNOW, BENEFITS IN YOUR LIFE, BUT YOU WON'T BE ABLE TO WALK IN VICTORY UNLESS YOU HAVE UNDERSTANDING. AND I DIDN'T UNDERSTAND THE UNCONDITIONAL LOVE OF GOD. I HAD EXPERIENCED IT, BUT I COULDN'T UNDERSTAND IT. AND MY DOCTRINE THAT I WAS RAISED WITH WAS TELLING ME THAT GOD LOVED ME WHEN I WAS WORTH LOVING. SO WHEN I GOT TO VIETNAM, I WAS SEEKING GOD WITH MY WHOLE HEART, BUT THERE WAS JUST SO MUCH UNGODLINESS. THERE WERE SO MANY UNGODLY PEOPLE AROUND ME. THEY WERE DOING DOPE AND JUST ANYTHING YOU COULD IMAGINE. AND I WAS LIVING IN CONSTANT CONDEMNATION. THINKING ABOUT GOD, I SHOULD BE ABLE TO AFFECT THIS CHANGE. I SHOULD BE ABLE TO SEE MORE PEOPLE LED TO THE LORD. I LED A FEW PEOPLE TO THE LORD, BUT MAN, COMPARED TO THE NEED, IT WAS JUST SO MUCH. AND I HONESTLY, I REMEMBER DURING VIETNAM THINKING THAT GOD, I BELIEVE YOU'RE JUST THROUGH WITH ME. You, YOU'RE GOING TO SET ME ON A SHELF. I BELIEVED I'D GO TO HEAVEN, BUT I JUST COULDN'T UNDERSTAND HOW GOD COULD LOVE ME BECAUSE I DIDN'T LOVE ME. I WASN'T PLEASED. I KNEW I SHOULD HAVE BEEN MORE OUTGOING, BUT I WAS AN INTROVERT. I WASN'T WITNESSING TO PEOPLE, AND I JUST FELT UNDER CONDEMNATION. BUT THIS VERSE RIGHT HERE SAYS, GOD'S KIND OF LOVE BEARS ALL THINGS. HE'S NEVER GOING TO SET YOU ON A SHELF. GOD IS NEVER GOING TO GIVE UP ON YOU. SEE, I THOUGHT THAT HE HAD GIVEN UP ON ME BECAUSE I WAS STILL TYING HIS LOVE TO MY PERFORMANCE. BUT THIS SAYS THAT GOD'S KIND OF LOVE BEARS ALL THINGS, BELIEVES ALL THINGS. THERE ARE SOME OF YOU THAT JUST CAN'T BELIEVE THAT GOD COULD STILL USE YOU, THAT GOD COULD BE FRIENDS WITH YOU, BUT GOD KIND OF LOVE BEARS 
ALL THINGS, AND IT BELIEVES ALL THINGS. GOD HAS FAITH. GOD IS BELIEVING THE BEST FOR YOU. YOU KNOW, THERE'S A SCRIPTURE OVER IN 1 TIMOTHY, CHAPTER 1, THAT SAYS THAT PAUL WAS SPEAKING, AND HE SAYS, GOD COUNTED ME FAITHFUL, PUTTING ME INTO THE MINISTRY. AND GOD DID THAT WHEN PAUL WAS STILL SAUL, AND HE WAS PERSECUTING THE CHRISTIANS, AND HE WAS THE FURTHEST THING FROM BEING A TRUE SERVANT OF THE LORD. AND YET HE HAD THIS EXPERIENCE, AND GOD CALLED HIM AND SAID, I'M SENDING YOU TO THE GENTILES. AND HE CALLED HIM A MINISTER AND CALLED HIM FAITHFUL WHEN HE HAD BEEN NOTHING BUT A PERSECUTOR OF THE CHURCH. GOD CALLS THOSE THINGS THAT BE NOT AS THOUGH THEY ARE, ROMANS 4, 17. AND SO GOD RIGHT HERE IS BELIEVING. GOD'S KIND OF LOVE, IT'LL BELIEVE. GOD IS BELIEVING THE BEST ABOUT YOU AND ME. HE'S NOT IGNORANT OF OUR FAILINGS. HE'S NOT IGNORANT OF ALL OF OUR QUIRKS, BUT HE STILL BELIEVES THE BEST ABOUT US. HE HOPES ALL THINGS. THERE'S PEOPLE THAT SAY, WELL, MAN, I JUST LOST MY HOPE THAT GOD COULD EVER REDEEM MY LIFE, THAT GOD COULD EVER USE ME. WELL, YOU AREN'T OPERATING IN GOD'S KIND OF LOVE BECAUSE GOD HOPES ALL THINGS AND ENDURES ALL THINGS. GOD'S KIND OF LOVE, VERSE 8, NEVER FAILS. GOD IS NEVER GOING TO GIVE UP ON YOU, EVEN IF YOU'VE GIVEN UP ON YOU. GOD IS NOT GIVING UP ON YOU. MAN, THAT IS AWESOME. AND WHEN I BEGIN TO UNDERSTAND THAT GOD'S LOVE WAS UNCONDITIONAL, IT JUST TOOK ME TO A WHOLE NEW LEVEL. I'VE ALREADY QUOTED THIS VERSE uh, LAST WEEK, BUT IN GALATIANS CHAPTER 5, VERSE 6, IT SAYS, FAITH WORKS BY LOVE. THE THING THAT REALLY MAKES FAITH WORK IN YOUR LIFE IS UNDERSTANDING HOW MUCH GOD LOVES YOU. YOU KNOW, I REMEMBER WHEN MY KIDS WERE LITTLE THAT I'D TAKE THEM SWIMMING AND THEY COULDN'T SWIM, AND YET THEY WOULD JUMP INTO THE WATER BECAUSE I WAS STANDING THERE AND SAYING, TRUST ME. AND YOU KNOW WHY THEY JUMPED INTO THE WATER? IT COULD HAVE BEEN THE END OF THEIR LIFE. THEY CAN'T BREATHE UNDERWATER. THEY COULDN'T SWIM. BUT THEY TRUSTED THAT IF I SAID JUMP, THAT I WAS GOING TO TRUST THEM. AND THAT'S WHAT MAKES EVERYTHING WORK. IF YOU ARE STRUGGLING TO TRUST GOD IN SOME AREA, IT'S BECAUSE YOU ARE STRUGGLING TO UNDERSTAND GOD'S KIND OF LOVE. AND SAD TO SAY, RELIGION HAS MISREPRESENTED GOD'S KIND OF LOVE AND TAUGHT THAT IT'S CONDITIONAL. MOST CHRISTIANS WILL SAY, OH, YES, GOD IS LOVE, BUT THEIR UNDERSTANDING OF LOVE IS THAT IT'S ALL CONDITIONAL AND THAT GOD WOULD COME THROUGH IF THEY COULD BE HOLY ENOUGH, IF THEY COULD DO ENOUGH. BUT I'M TELLING YOU THAT GOD'S LOVE IS UNCONDITIONAL AND GOD LOVES YOU. YOU KNOW, YOU'VE NEVER SEEN A LITTLE ONE-YEAR-OLD CHILD OR TWO-YEAR-OLD CHILD IN THEIR PARENTS' ARMS SAYING, I CONFESS WITH MY MOUTH AND BELIEVE IN MY HEART THAT MY DAD IS GOING TO FEED ME TODAY. I CONFESS THAT HE'S GOING TO TAKE CARE OF ME AND PROVIDE ME WITH FOOD AND CLOTHING AND THINGS LIKE THIS. I CONFESS THAT HE'S GOING TO GET ME A BIKE WHEN I GET SO OLD AND THINGS LIKE THAT. NO, KIDS JUST TRUST. IT'S LOVE THAT MOTIVATES THEM. AND THEY'LL COME RUNNING IN TO THE KITCHEN AND SAY, GIVE ME SOMETHING TO EAT. AND IT'S NOT REALLY A DEMAND. THEY CAN'T MAKE IT HAPPEN, BUT THEY JUST KNOW THAT BECAUSE THE PARENT LOVES THEM, THAT THE PARENT IS GOING TO TAKE CARE OF THEM. DID YOU KNOW THIS IS THE WAY IT SHOULD BE WITH US AND OUR HEAVENLY FATHER? AND YET YOU FIND SO MANY PEOPLE THAT ARE TRYING TO USE THEIR CONFESSION AND THEY ARE SAYING, I BELIEVE, CONFESS WITH MY MOUTH AND BELIEVE IN MY HEART THAT MY GOD IS GOING TO DO THIS. AND WHAT THEY'RE DOING IS TRYING TO MANIPULATE GOD, TRYING TO MOTIVATE GOD. THEY'LL CALL A PRAYER CHAIN AND THEY'LL THINK, WELL, GOD WON'T HEAL ME JUST BASED ON MY PRAYER, SO I'LL GET A HUNDRED PEOPLE TO PRAY AND WE WILL PUT SO MUCH PRESSURE ON GOD. WE'LL TWIST HIS ARM AND WE WILL MAKE THIS HEALING COME TO PASS. SEE, AGAIN, those, ALL OF THOSE THINGS THAT I'M DESCRIBING ARE PEOPLE WHO THINK THAT GOD'S LOVE IS CONDITIONAL AND YOU GOT TO SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER EARN IT, AND IF YOU COME UP SHORT, WELL, THEN YOU GET OTHER PEOPLE AND YOU POOL ALL OF YOUR RESOURCES AND POOL ALL OF YOUR VIRTUE, AND MAYBE THAT WILL BE ENOUGH TO GET GOD TO DO SOMETHING. IT'S NOT LIKE THAT. ACCORDING TO ALL OF THESE VERSES TALKING ABOUT GOD'S KIND OF LOVE, GOD LOVES YOU MORE THAN YOU LOVE YOU. GOD WANTS YOU TO PROSPER MORE THAN YOU WANT TO PROSPER. YOU KNOW, A PASSAGE OF SCRIPTURE THAT'S BECOME PRETTY POPULAR LATELY IS JEREMIAH 29, 11. I KNOW THE THOUGHTS THAT I THINK TOWARDS YOU, SAYS THE LORD, THOUGHTS OF PEACE AND NOT OF EVIL, TO GIVE YOU AN EXPECTED END. THE NIV SAYS A HOPE IN A FUTURE. AND IF YOU READ THE CONTEXT OF THAT, HE'S ACTUALLY TALKING TO THE JEWS. 
AND HE'S TALKING ABOUT THAT BECAUSE THEY HAVE FORSAKEN HIM AND FORSAKEN THE COVENANT, THAT HE IS GOING TO HAVE A FOREIGN NATION COME AND DESTROY THEM AND TAKE THEM INTO CAPTIVITY, AND HE'S PRONOUNCING JUDGMENT ON THEM, IF YOU READ IT IN ITS CONTEXT. BUT RIGHT IN THE MIDST OF THIS JUDGMENT, HE SAYS, BUT I KNOW THE THOUGHTS THAT I HAVE TOWARDS YOU. I KNOW MY PLANS. THEY, are, they WERE PLANS ONLY FOR YOUR GOOD. THIS WAS NEVER GOD'S INTENT. IT WAS ONLY BECAUSE THEY REFUSED GOD'S BLESSING. THEY REFUSED TO COOPERATE WITH HIM THAT THESE THINGS CAME TO PASS. AND I CAN SAY THE SAME THING ABOUT US, THAT GOD HAS PLANS FOR EACH ONE OF US, AND THOSE PLANS ARE BETTER THAN YOUR PLANS FOR YOURSELF. GOD LOVES YOU MORE THAN YOU LOVE YOURSELF. GOD HAS GREAT PLANS FOR YOU, AND IT'S UNCONDITIONAL. BUT THE ONE THING THAT'LL STOP GOD'S PLANS FROM COMING TO PASS IN YOUR LIFE IS NOT YOUR SIN, AND I KNOW THAT THAT'S A RADICAL STATEMENT, AND THERE'S PEOPLE THAT'LL CHOKE ON THAT, BUT IT'S YOUR, your TRUST IN YOURSELF. IT'S YOUR SELF-RIGHTEOUSNESS. IT'S YOUR OWN GOODNESS AND THE FACT THAT YOU'RE TRYING TO SUBSTITUTE YOUR GOODNESS FOR WHAT JESUS HAS DONE FOR YOU. THAT IS THE REAL BARRIER THAT STOPS GOD. YOU KNOW, I MENTIONED THIS ON MY PROGRAM LAST WEEK, BUT MOSES, KILLED PEOPLE, AND YET HE WROTE FIVE BOOKS OF THE BIBLE. DAVID WAS A MURDERER AND KILLED HIS uh, LOVER'S HUSBAND SO THAT IT WOULD... Uh, TRYING TO COVER UP HIS SIN AND STUFF LIKE THIS, AND YET HE WAS ONE OF THE MAIN CHARACTERS. PAUL KILLED PEOPLE IN THE NEW TESTAMENT, AND YET HE WROTE HALF OF THE BOOKS OF THE NEW TESTAMENT. AND SO I'M NOT SAYING THAT THOSE THINGS ARE GOOD, BUT I'M SAYING THAT GOD USED PEOPLE WITH ALL OF THESE FAULTS AND FAILURES. GOD DID NOT CHOOSE THEM BECAUSE THEY WERE THE HOLIEST PEOPLE AROUND, BUT HE CHOSE THEM BECAUSE THEY HUMBLED THEMSELVES AND THEY SUBMITTED AND LET GOD LIVE THROUGH THEM. AS PAUL SAID, IT'S NOT ME, IT'S CHRIST LIVING THROUGH ME. HE HAD DIED TO HIMSELF. WE'VE GOT TO GET TO A PLACE THAT WE QUIT TYING GOD'S LOVE FOR US TO OUR OWN PERFORMANCE. YOU DO NOT DESERVE GOD'S LOVE. I DON'T DESERVE GOD'S LOVE. IT'S A GRACE GIFT. IT SAYS THE WAGES OF SIN IS DEATH, BUT THE GIFT OF GOD IS ETERNAL LIFE. IT'S NOT SOMETHING THAT YOU EARN. IT'S A GIFT. HE HAS GIVEN THIS TO US. IT IS UNCONDITIONAL LOVE. AGAIN, THERE'S JUST SO MUCH TO SAY ABOUT THIS. I'M OVERWHELMED. HOW DO YOU GET THIS POINT ACROSS IN JUST A FEW MINUTES ON A BROADCAST? I'M DOING THE BEST I CAN, BUT THESE OTHER MATERIALS THAT I'VE GOT, ESPECIALLY THIS TEACHING ON THE BOOK OF ROMANS, THAT'S PAUL'S MASTERPIECE ON GRACE. IT JUST GOES INTO SO MUCH MORE DETAIL THAN WHAT I'M ABLE TO DO RIGHT HERE. I ENCOURAGE YOU TO PLEASE GET THESE MATERIALS AND LET GOD LOVE YOU INDEPENDENT OF WHAT YOU DESERVE. AND YOU KNOW, ONE OF THE GREAT BENEFITS OF THIS IS THAT WHEN YOU, when you QUIT ATTACHING GOD'S LOVE TO YOUR PERFORMANCE, THEN WHEN YOU PERFORM BADLY, YOU DON'T LOSE GOD'S LOVE. YOU KNOW, I DON'T GO OUT AND RAPE AND MURDER AND PLUNDER AND DO THOSE KIND OF THINGS, BUT MAN, I FAIL. I FAIL TO BE THE PERSON THAT I'M SUPPOSED TO BE. AND THERE'S TIMES THAT I GET DISGUSTED WITH MYSELF AND THINK I SHOULD HAVE DONE BETTER THAN THIS. I KNEW BETTER THAN THIS. BUT BECAUSE I UNDERSTAND THAT GOD'S LOVE IS UNCONDITIONAL, I DON'T UNPLUG. YOU MAY NOT PHRASE IT THIS WAY, BUT MOST OF YOU REALLY RELATE GOD'S LOVE TO YOUR PERFORMANCE. AND BECAUSE OF THAT, THAT'S WHY YOU DON'T HAVE CONFIDENCE. THAT'S WHY YOU DON'T HAVE ASSURANCE THAT YOU'RE GOING TO SEE THE THINGS THAT YOU NEED FROM GOD COME TO PASS. LIKE, SAY, FOR INSTANCE, IF YOU WERE IN A SERVICE WITH ME, AND IF YOU WERE ACTUALLY IN FRONT OF ME IN A SERVICE, AND IF WE HAD SOMEBODY DIE, LIKE WE ACTUALLY HAD THIS HAPPEN BACK, I THINK IT WAS IN 2018 OR 2017, WE ACTUALLY HAD A WOMAN BRING HER CHILD AND LAY THE CHILD ON THE STAGE. THE CHILD DIED DURING OUR SERVICE. AND IF SOMETHING LIKE THAT WAS TO HAPPEN, IF YOU WERE IN A PLACE AND I SAID, WELL, I'VE SEEN PEOPLE RAISED FROM THE DEAD. HOW MANY OF YOU BELIEVE THAT GOD CAN RAISE THIS CHILD FROM THE DEAD? DID YOU KNOW MOST OF THE PEOPLE THAT COME TO MY MEETINGS WOULD SAY, AMEN. THEY BELIEVE THAT GOD CAN DO THINGS LIKE THAT. AND IF I WAS TO SAY, I'M GOING TO PRAY FOR THIS CHILD, AND I BELIEVE THAT GOD'S GOING TO HEAL THEM, MANY, MANY PEOPLE WOULD WANT TO GET UP CLOSE TO SEE THIS. THEY BELIEVE THAT GOD WOULD ANSWER MY PRAYER. SO THEY DON'T DOUBT THAT GOD HEALS. THEY DON'T DOUBT THAT IT HAPPENS TODAY. BUT YOU KNOW WHERE I COULD LOSE 
OF THE PEOPLE IN A MEETING LIKE THAT, I COULD SAY, ALL RIGHT, IF YOU BELIEVE IT, YOU COME UP HERE AND PRAY, AND YOU SEE THIS CHILD RAISED FROM THE DEAD. NOW, SEE, THERE'S PEOPLE THAT BELIEVE THAT GOD HEALS. THEY MIGHT EVEN BELIEVE THAT GOD HAD HEALED THROUGH ME, BUT WHEN I SAY, YOU COME PRAY FOR HIM, ALL OF A SUDDEN, YOUR FAITH TURNS TO DREAD. IT TURNS TO DOUBT AND UNBELIEF. YOUR EXCITEMENT TURNS TO FEAR. WHAT IS IT THAT CHANGED? DID GOD CHANGE? DID YOUR BELIEF ABOUT WHAT GOD COULD DO CHANGE? NO, BUT WHAT CHANGED WAS, SEE, YOU... THE REASON YOU HAVE MORE FAITH IN MY PRAYERS THAN YOUR PRAYERS IS BECAUSE YOU KNOW YOU BETTER THAN YOU KNOW ME. IF YOU KNEW ME AS WELL AS YOU KNOW YOU, IF YOU KNEW EVERY FAILURE IN MY LIFE AND EVERY WEAKNESS IN MY LIFE, YOU WOULDN'T HAVE ANY MORE FAITH IN MY PRAYERS THAN YOU'VE GOT IN YOUR PRAYERS. BUT SEE, WHEN I SAY, ALL RIGHT, IF YOU BELIEVE THAT GOD HEALS, YOU COME PRAY FOR THIS CHILD, AND ALL OF A SUDDEN, you, YOU LOSE THAT FAITH THAT WORKS BY LOVE BECAUSE YOU THINK THAT GOD LOVES YOU AND ANOINTS YOU AND FLOWS THROUGH YOU WHEN YOU'RE DOING EVERYTHING RIGHT. AND YOUR OWN HEART IS CONDEMNING YOU. AND YOUR OWN HEART KNOWS THAT YOU HAVEN'T DONE EVERYTHING RIGHT. SEE, WHEN I MINISTER TO PEOPLE, THIS IS WHAT I HAVE TO OVERCOME ALL OF THE TIME. I'M SEEKING THE LORD WITH ALL OF MY HEART. I'VE BEEN SEEKING THE LORD FOR 55 YEARS. I'VE SEEN SOME GREAT THINGS HAPPEN, BUT DID YOU KNOW WHAT? I STILL DO NOT DESERVE GOD MOVING IN MY LIFE. AND WHEN SOMEBODY COMES TO ME, LIKE THIS EXAMPLE I WAS TALKING ABOUT WHERE A WOMAN PUT HER 14-MONTH-OLD BABY ON THE STAGE, AND HERE WE WERE IN FRONT OF PROBABLY two OR 3,000 PEOPLE, AND WHAT WERE WE GOING TO DO? I HAD TO OVERCOME SITTING HERE AND THINKING THAT GOD WAS GOING TO USE ME BASED ON SOME WORTH OR VALUE OR HOLINESS ON MY PART. NO, WE JUST STARTED PRAYING AND WE PUT OUR ATTENTION ON THE LORD. AND uh, WE SAW THAT LITTLE BABY RAISED FROM THE DEAD. THIS BABY WAS JUST LAYING THERE LIMP. ITS ARMS WERE EXTENDED LIKE THAT. IT HAD ALREADY STARTED LOSING ITS COLOR. AND AS WE PRAYED FOR IT, I, I WAS STANDING ON THE STAGE AND THERE WAS OTHER PEOPLE HOLDING THE BABY AND HAD THEIR HAND ON THE BABY'S CHEST. AND ALL OF A SUDDEN, THESE ARMS JUST FLEW UP AND THE BABY GASPED AND CAME BACK TO LIFE. AND WE SAW A LITTLE BABY RAISED FROM THE DEAD RIGHT IN ONE OF OUR SERVICES. IT WAS AWESOME. BUT DID YOU KNOW, I HAVE TO OVERCOME THIS CONDEMNATION THAT MY OWN HEART KNOWS I'M NOT THE PERSON THAT I'M SUPPOSED TO BE. AND I HAVE TO CONSTANTLY LOOK BEYOND MYSELF AND SEE THAT GOD'S LOVE, HIS ANOINTING, HIS POWER, HIS ANSWERS TO PRAYER ARE UNCONDITIONAL. AND IF YOU TIE GOD'S LOVE TO SOME WORTH OR VALUE ON YOUR OWN, THEN YOU'VE CHEAPENED THE WHOLE THING. GOD'S LOVE IS MUCH, MUCH GREATER THAN THAT. GOD'S LOVE IS AWESOME, UNCONDITIONAL. THAT'S JUST THE BEST WORD THAT I HAVE TO DESCRIBE IT. IF YOU PUT CONDITIONS ON GOD'S KIND OF LOVE AND YOU THINK THAT, OH, YEAH, HE'S LOVE, BUT HE WON'T USE THAT LOVE, HE WON'T RELEASE THAT LOVE UNTIL I DO THIS, THIS, AND THIS, WELL, THEN IT'S NOT TRULY GOD'S KIND OF LOVE. GOD'S KIND OF LOVE IS AN UNCONDITIONAL LOVE. HE COMMENDED HIS LOVE TOWARD US IN THAT WHILE WE WERE YET SINNERS, CHRIST DIED FOR US. YOU DIDN'T DESERVE IT. YOU WEREN'T LIVING HOLY. YOU HADN'T BEEN FASTING AND PRAYING. WHEN YOU CALLED OUT TO THE LORD AND ASKED FOR SALVATION, YOU WERE ACTUALLY AT YOUR WORST. WHAT MAKES YOU THINK THAT IF YOU GOT SAVED BY GRACE, THAT NOW, SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER, YEARS AFTER YOU'VE BEEN BORN AGAIN, SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER, YOU'VE GOT TO EARN YOUR HEALING OR EARN YOUR PROSPERITY OR EARN THE DELIVERANCE FROM DEPRESSION AND DISCOURAGEMENT. IF YOU GOT SAVED BY GRACE, WHY DON'T YOU JUST RECEIVE EVERYTHING ELSE BY GRACE AND LOOK TO HIS GOODNESS? NOW, THERE IS A HOLINESS IN THE CHRISTIAN LIFE, BUT IT IS NOT FOR GOD'S SAKE. HOLINESS DOESN'T CHANGE GOD'S ATTITUDE TOWARDS YOU, BUT IT'LL CHANGE YOUR ATTITUDE TOWARDS GOD. YOU NEED TO BE STUDYING THE WORD, NOT BECAUSE GOD KEEPS RECORD AND AFTER YOU READ SO MANY CHAPTERS, YOU CAN GET AN ANSWER TO PRAYER. BUT NO, YOU READ THE WORD BECAUSE FAITH COMES BY HEARING AND HEARING BY THE WORD OF GOD. HOLINESS CHANGES YOUR HEART TOWARDS GOD. IT DOESN'T CHANGE GOD'S HEART TOWARDS YOU. SO YOU DO NEED TO LIVE HOLY AND YOU NEED TO SEEK THE LORD, BUT YOU NEED TO REJECT THE CONDEMNATION AND REJECT THIS CONCEPT THAT GOD'S LOVE IS TIED TO SOME PERFORMANCE ON YOUR PART. GOD'S LOVE IS AN UNCONDITIONAL LOVE TOWARDS YOU. MAN, THAT'S POWERFUL. AGAIN, I'VE GOT THIS LITTLE BOOKLET ENTITLED 20 REVELATIONS THAT WILL CHANGE YOUR LIFE, AND THIS IS THE FIFTH REVELATION WE'VE BEEN TALKING ABOUT, GOD'S KIND OF LOVE BEING UNCONDITIONAL. 
THIS IS OUR FREE GIFT TO YOU. AND THEN WE HAVE CD'S AND DVD'S THAT WERE TAKEN FROM MY TELEVISION PROGRAM. AND I HAVE THE CD AND DVD BOTH ON THIS USB THAT YOU CAN GET. AND THEN WE HAVE TEACHING ON GOD'S KIND OF LOVE TO YOU. AND THIS IS ABOUT A FIVE OR SIX HOUR SET THAT WILL JUST AMPLIFY ON THE THINGS THAT I'VE BEEN TALKING ABOUT. AND THEN WE HAVE TEACHING ON uh, THE BOOK OF ROMANS. I HAVE CD'S AND DVD'S. AND I ALSO HAVE THIS 430-PAGE BOOK THAT WILL GO INTO MORE DETAIL. AND TODAY IS MY LAST DAY TO OFFER THIS EXTRA TEACHING ON GOD'S KIND OF LOVE TO YOU IN THE BOOK OF ROMANS. WE'LL CONTINUE TO TALK ABOUT THESE 20 REVELATIONS ON MY PROGRAM TOMORROW. SO I ENCOURAGE YOU TO LISTEN IN THEN. BUT LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER AS HE GIVES YOU INFORMATION. AND PLEASE RECEIVE THESE MATERIALS TODAY. ANDREW IS OFFERING HIS BOOKLET, 20 REVELATIONS THAT WILL CHANGE YOUR LIFE AS HIS FREE GIFT TO YOU TODAY. THIS BOOKLET IS LIMITED TO ONE FREE BOOKLET PER HOUSEHOLD AND IS AVAILABLE IN THE U.S., U.K., CANADA, AND AUSTRALIA. CONTACT US TODAY TO RECEIVE YOUR FREE BOOKLET. ANDREW'S COMPLETE SERIES, 20 REVELATIONS THAT WILL CHANGE YOUR LIFE, IS AVAILABLE IN A CD OR TV DVD ALBUM AND AS A USB MADE FROM OUR DAILY TELEVISION BROADCAST. EACH OF THESE VALUABLE RESOURCES IS AVAILABLE FOR A GIFT OF ANY AMOUNT WHEN YOU CONTACT US. Andrew mentioned on his broadcast today his teaching, Romans, Paul's Masterpiece on Grace. Contact us today to receive this valuable resource. Also on today's broadcast, Andrew taught on God's kind of love to you. This teaching is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events and let the Word of God transform your life. Andrew's upcoming live stream events are available to watch at awmi.net slash live. In the month of September, join us at Karis Bible College for a special patriotic performance, the 9-11 Memorial Tribute. Then, Andrew will be speaking in Hayes, Kansas. Lastly, in September, Andrew will be back in Woodland Park hosting the Vision Conference with guest speaker Dwayne Sheriff. And in October, Andrew will be speaking in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Then join Andrew in Woodland Park for our annual Global Ministers Conference. Andrew will be joined by guest speakers Billy Epperhart, Mike and Carrie Pickett, Bob Yandian, Dwayne Sheriff, Bob Nichols, Greg Moore, and Wendell Park. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, visit our website at awmi.net.